What's going on guys? The Original Mako here and we are back with another Gunfire Reborn video. Um, this time we're going to be doing some tips and tricks for beginning players and this is going to be some pretty basic stuff. Uh, I might do tips and tricks for more advanced players later, uh, but if you already know a decent amount about the game, you probably just want to skip this video. Uh, if you want to see like specific boss tips and tricks or uh, like very advanced strategies, stuff like that, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to do that. Uh, but we're going to be doing a very basic one to start. I actually made a whole new archive for this. Uh, my character is level 4 right now, so I'm very early in the game, so I can kind of go through that stuff. But yeah, let's jump right into it. So first things first, the number one tip I have on here for beginning players is do not forget about your E and your grenades. You see many different enemies, almost every enemy, will drop grenades when you kill them. So if you just don't use them, you're not getting the max value out of what you can do. And especially, actually, both characters, uh, early on you'll only have the cat, but both characters benefit greatly uh, and have very, very good grenade synergies. So make sure you're keeping your eye on your grenade, keeping your eye on your E, and don't forget that those are there and good utilities for you to use to clear ads and clear rooms and even help you DPS the boss a lot faster than you normally would. The next tip, number two on the list, is search around rooms. Don't just try to blaze through it, uh, unless you're speedrunning, obviously. I've done some speedruns. But early in the game, if you're just trying to get through levels, stages, uh, look around each room. Search for gold chests. And more importantly than gold chests even are these vaults here. Um, so I've leveled up once, or I've, I'm level four. Uh, if you haven't done anything yet, you might not have these unlocked, but there's a talent in your skill tree that you can spend soul essence on to level up, and you can now break these and enter into them. You just have to shoot it, and it'll open up, and when you go inside, you have to do some sort of either kill enemies or do some sort of challenge like this, a roll in the rolling ball challenge, and you'll get a scroll at the end. Um, so I'm going to kind of go ahead and do a little tutorial for this vault while I'm here. Uh, so this one is not terrible. Uh, you want to wait until there's like a break in it, and then you can go hide in one of these corners. And then once they're offset, then it's really easy to get through. Uh, it just takes a little bit of practice. And then you want to follow the boulders in the second one all the way down to this little ledge, because there's an extra chest here uh, that a lot of people don't really know about. And Hawkeye sights a very good scroll, so we're going to take it. And there's one more chest. This one I've never done without taking damage. So you might take damage here. But it's okay. You should only get hit twice. Once or two, twice at most. Um, so yeah, look at that. One, one vault, two extra scrolls for me to use later. So that's tip number two. Look for every gold chest and vault you can find. Tip number three that I have for beginning players is to focus on dodging more than you focus on damage. If you learn how each character works, or how each enemy works, what their attacks are, what their moves are, you should be able to dodge most of their attacks. And the more you can dodge, the better off you're going to be in the long run. So when you're first playing the game, just focus on not getting hit more than doing damage. And if I do a boss tips and tricks video, the first boss, that's so important. Uh, you're going to want to try to get him down as quick as possible, but learn his moves. Dodge every enemy right here. The grenadiers are always going to launch grenades. You see the circle on the ground. It'll tell you if you're in the target way. And then once you feel comfortable dodging, or once you know you're safe, then you can focus on killing the enemies and getting on to the next room. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tie in tip number four while we're here, because it kind of goes with that. Uh, you have to remember, and I'm going to show you guys here, your shield... Hit me. Your shield will regen. So I'm down to 32, and it should start going back up. Right there. So the shield starts regening. However, if you get hit for health damage, as you can already kind of see, we're at 25 out of 80. Uh, that is not going to regen. That is going to stay at 25 out of 80 unless you buy stuff like a magic bun from the peddler or you find some on the ground. Uh, but that's the only way to get your health back. And it's not very efficient because you obviously have to spend your money that you could use on other things in the peddler. So tip number three, focus on dodging more than damage. Tip number four, 
make sure you remember that your shield regenerates, but your health does not. So taking health damage is much more of a serious thing than taking health damage. Tip number five, and I know this sounds obvious, but find out what weapons work for you. Um, there's two parts about the weapons that are really important. The first one is finding the right weapons for you. Like I said, there's a lot of different weapons in the game when you unlock them, and there's a lot of different things they do, so just experiment with everything. Find out what you like the most for clearing ads, for doing boss damage, for taking down shields, for piercing enemies, and um, look for those weapons on your run. However, uh, tip number six coming in with that is to try to understand that the weapon inscriptions, like the crit X plus 40% that we're looking at here, and the 25% chance to recover 50% ammo, those inscriptions on these different weapons are almost always more important than the weapon itself. Find the best inscriptions that you can for each weapon. And like I said, this is a lot of just experimenting here. So experiment which inscriptions you like the most, which ones you see perform the best, and look for those on different weapons. There will be cases where there's a weapon that you just don't like so much that it doesn't matter if it has perfect roll, you're not going to get it. And there'll be weapons that you like so much that you don't care what inscriptions they have, you're going to take it anyway. Um, find those, stick to it, but more often than not, the inscriptions on these weapons here are going to be more important than the actual weapon itself. So just look out for what's best for you, find out, experiment, do some runs, figure out what works and what doesn't. Uh, and it's different for every person. We all have different play styles. Some people would rather sit back with snipers that do piercing damage. Some people would rather have this angelic aura where you're just up in your face and just spraying and praying. Um, so keep an eye... Oh, I just attracted the enemies. So keep an eye out for that. And um, those will help you... Th the more comfortable you feel using a weapon, the better off you're going to perform with it. So just look out for that and do what's best for you. Tip number seven, and this one is actually really important for everybody to remember um, because it actually has lost me and Kyle a couple of runs when we've played. Make sure to remember that you can drop scrolls that you are no longer you no longer need or actually kind of hurt you more than help you. Um, there's a few key examples of this, and that happens a little bit more kind of once you've un <coughs> unlocked some more scrolls. But a big example early game is this Hawkeye site. It's plus 200% crit damage, uh, crit multiplier, however, 50% weapon damage when not triggering a crit. And weapons with scope gain double zoom. So if you start using, I don't know, a rocket launcher or grenade launcher, something that doesn't really crit, all this does is hurt you. It, does, it makes you do half damage. So it's huge to remember what scrolls you have, and it's huge to remember that you can actually just, all you gotta do is hold, right click, discard the scroll, and move on with your life. So keep in mind, you can always discard these scrolls to give yourself the most optimal loadout for every single fight. Tip number eight. This next tip is pretty big, and it goes for all times, not just the boss fight, but I wanted to show it in the boss fight because it's probably more important in this boss fight, first boss fight, than any. Well, all the boss fights than any normal fight, but it's very important in a normal fight as well um, you know you've got a dash, it's left shift, that's the default key for it, but maybe you find it, it's something else. Try to, at all times, have your dash up against this guy. And then, when he attacks you, you can always dodge it with your dash. Um, the only other way to really dodge stuff is to use this pole to tank the attack for you. But if for some reason you couldn't get behind the pole, or whatever, um... The dash is like a failsafe. A last second, it's the only thing that's fast enough for you to dodge the attacks. Unless you have insane movement speed, you're not going to be able to get out of the way of his attacks. Like, watch. If I just try to walk out of the range um, of any of these right there, I, don't, I can't do it. So always try to have your dash up. Um, like right there, just to be safe, I'll dash back. Uh, the pull's going to block that. Um, his jump attack is very quick. Uh, try to read which way he's facing. Like right there, I couldn't get behind the pole. So I made sure to jump out of the way. That one I didn't have my dash up for, so unlucky. Um, 
Well, I'm surprised this pole isn't broke yet. And right there, I was so close to killing him and uh, couldn't dash out of the way in time. So once again, try to always make sure you have your dash up. Uh, it's one of the most important things in the game for getting out of the way of stuff, especially in that first fight. Um, okay, so that'll actually lead me into tip number nine. Uh, I'm going to give you guys some, some hints on what to build with your soul essence when you get to your talent tree. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the very first thing you want to build is this expedition, the exploration one. Um, I think it only costs like five or something. So it's not very expensive and it's one of the most important ones in the entire game. So it's pretty important. Um, all of these expedition, survival and battle will carry over to your second character. The hero ones will not. So these ones are specific to each hero. Um, the most important ones, as you can see, I built the exploration and then I built shield enhancement and special ammo pouch. Uh, shield enhancement, I think is pretty big just because like I mentioned, the shields do regen. So having more shield and more opportunity to regen, to take damage that can regen regenerate itself is, uh, pretty important in my opinion. Uh, skill power is like, is, is grenades, is, um, your grenades, um, for that, well, grenades and, um, your E or alt, whatever, energy orb, um, both of those will do more damage. Enhanced health, uh, carrying more ammo and an energy orb cooldown. Uh, the one I'm about to build here is going to be, uh, the hero energy orb cooldown one. Now, remember, you can't take any of the essence back, so you might as well try to spend it as efficiently as possible. And uh, if I had one more essence, I could do that and one of these perfectly, but I can't. So maybe I'll just do... Th no, this one's pretty important. Having your energy orb cool down faster is huge. And uh, it'll eventually, once you get to level 10, it'll unlock um, the second one here. Um, the most important ones early, like I said, are uh, this exploration one. And honestly... Um, this whole left tree here, I think, is extremely important. So once you hit level 10, adding these inscriptions is huge. Uh, I think by far the most important one in the slot. Uh, more important than the hero one, more important than grenade capacity, more important than arm support. Uh, damage resistance is good, but I still think the inscription ones are the best. Uh, so to start, uh, it's really give or take. I think, I, like I said, I like shield and upgrading your hero one. Uh, more ammo if you find yourself if you if you like a gun that you find yourself having a lot like very few ammo uh, then yeah go ahead and upgrade that um, shields very important health uh, skill enhancements not crazy but yeah do with that what you will but once you unlock level 10 and start unlocking these other ones uh, these inscriptions are really really big um, and then as you go down you'll start to figure it out more and more uh, by the time you get to level 30, you're probably not really going to be a beginner anymore, and you should have a better idea of what you want to build for yourself. But early game for overall efficiency, uh, exploration, shields, and the efficient orb. Everything else, uh, you can kind of do what you want with. And um, yeah, the last tip, I'm going to go all in one here on our last tip, is actually uh, going to be... Uh, one of these because until level 30 you only have this character so once again by the time you're 30 you're not really a beginner anymore uh, up until then the most important thing you can build uh, when you get those little goblets in this ascension tree here most important thing by far uh, it's the reason this the cat got buffed and it's the pretty much one of the only main reasons to use the cat in any run <laughs> is um this little number in the upper right of the smoke tree called Hex Smoke. Uh, enemies hit by smoke grenades deal minus 50% damage and take plus 20% damage for 6 seconds. And as you see, the tiers just get more and more crazy. Tier 3 is wild. But uh, even just having tier 1 of this is so important for the run. That boss fight there... If you find yourself struggling to stay alive during that boss fight and you keep dying and just can't get past it, if you build Hex Smoke to tier 1 or even tier 2, you're going to 
drastically improve your chances. Drastically. More than any other single item in the game, you'll improve your chances. Hex Smoke is the boss killer, or the hard enemy killer. It just mitigates their damage, makes you do more damage. It's huge. So keep that in mind, keep all these tips and tricks in mind, and you will have a much better chance of beating that first boss, and possibly even getting to that second boss and beating it as well. Um, once you get past the first boss, you kind of start to understand it a little bit more. Second boss is, takes you a few tries, and the last boss took me and Kyle forever. Um, so if you guys want like individual boss tips and tricks, individual character tips and tricks, uh, advanced tips and tricks just let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to deliver uh, until then I'm going to keep putting out content in this game I am loving it if you guys want to catch me do runs live go to twitch.tv slash the original Mako stream almost every single day around 8 between 8 and 9 eastern until uh, I don't know 1 one in the morning or so usually 1 to 2 around there so if you guys want to watch go ahead and check me out there the link will be in the description Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully these tips and tricks help you guys get to that first boss and kill him. Let me know what you think. See you guys in the next one.